Hello there, I'm Dr. Paul Leahy, one of the plastic surgeons here at Monarch Plastic Surgery in Kansas City. I wanted to quickly go over some of the different breast implant technologies that we utilize today. Starting off first with, uh, it probably is the most commonly used breast implant today, uh, uh, particularly in the United States, which is a silicone gel filled implant. Uh, it tends to do a very nice job of recreating what the feel and look of normal breast tissue would be, uh, simply adding volume and uh, the devices have a uh, soft shell to them and they can be filled with a range of different sizes and um, different qualities depending upon what, uh, what we're trying to accomplish. We still have available today and use uh, from time to time the saline filled implants or saltwater filled implants. Uh, essentially the shells of the two implants are, are made of similar material. It just depends on what they're filled with. Now, the silicone gel filled implants come to us from the factory completely filled, uh, so there's no filling done during the surgery, and as you can tell, they're extremely uh, durable. The um, saline filled implants also have a similar uh, durability, but we actually fill this implant up at the time of the surgery, so we can add sterile saline once the device is actually into the pocket that we make for the implant to live in. Uh, the two implants are very similar. They have similar lifespans, longevities, um, uh, and similar risks. It, um, the saline implants tend to have just a little bit more scalloping or a little bit more rippling at the edges, simply because of the nature of the difference between saline or water and a silicone gel, which has a little bit less, a little softer um, of those wrinkles at the edges. Um, they uh, both are not intended to be lifetime devices, so at some point, um, once you have one breast implant placed, uh, it will need to be exchanged. Uh, the timing of that certainly varies. Uh, we have different ways of monitoring the implants, and we like to see our patients at least yearly uh, to conduct those studies and make sure that everything is functioning properly. Um, moving on for a, a different style of implant that's uh, been out for a few years now in the United States, this is what's called a cohesive silicone implant. This behaves almost more like a rubber. In fact, some people um, call these gummy bear implants uh, because of the consistency of the material inside. So this can be useful, uh, particularly in, in situations of breast cancer when we're trying to recreate a breast um, completely using an implant. And so these implants have a little bit more of a teardrop shape to them. The material is a little bit more firm and so we see the implant a little bit less under the skin, a little bit less wrinkling. Um, these, uh, there are pros and cons to all of these things, and of course we would go over those with you when you come in for a consultation. Uh, typically, um, in preparation for placing one of these implants in the setting of a mastectomy for breast cancer, we oftentimes need to stretch the remaining skin and tissues there um, after the mastectomy in preparation for one of these implants. So that's often done with a device that's uh, called a tissue expander. And this is essentially an adjustable implant that is placed um, at the time of mastectomy or afterwards, depending upon the other therapies required. And it will allow us to put a small needle into it through the skin and um, slowly add uh, a saline or a salt water to it so that over week by week by week, the device is slowly getting larger and stretching the tissues uh, to make way for the eventual implant. This is nice because then the uh, patient gets to choose what her breast size will look like and be ultimately. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in consultation. Uh, we can hopefully answer all the questions that you might have. Thank you.